Welcome to In Her Voice. My name is Kelly Covert, and I am passionate about helping women live authentically by listening to their inner voice. Get ready to be inspired by women of all walks of life that have set aside their should be's and not good enoughs and are standing in their true voice, the voice of wisdom that each and every one of us has inside. Hello, hello, this is Kelly Covert, and you are listening to In Her Voice. Thank you so much for pressing play today, for inviting me into your space, into your time, into your ears. I'm so grateful for you. And when I say that, I really, really mean it because if it weren't for you, In Her Voice would not be happening. So today I have a really special little episode to share with you because As I was thinking about what to record for today, the topic of rest kept coming up, bubbling up from my inner voice. And I thought, okay, yeah, I definitely need to share about that. I need to talk about that. But I couldn't figure out quite what the context would be. And then it hit me. So February, as I've told you, is all about sharing for me, sharing things I love with you, sharing people that I love with you. And I'm also going to use this opportunity today to share a little bit of my own story with you. And I feel it was interesting because when I was thinking about sharing this with you, I thought, well, everyone knows that about me, but I think that that's an assumption. And so if you've heard the story before, you don't have to listen, but if you haven't, or maybe if you want to listen again, you might pull something new out of it for yourself. And that's my hope. So today, as we talk about rest, I'm going to share with you how I learned the deep lesson of, and the hard lesson for me of how to give up overachieving, of how to take a step back, of how to say no, and of how to truly rest my body. And This is so interesting because I feel that our journey, how we evolve into the women that we are, into the knowingness that we are worthy, into being open to loving ourselves fully is a journey, right? It it doesn't happen all at once. And so this part of my journey that I'm going to talk with you about was not at the beginning, Um, the beginning of my journey into this realization of who I actually am and into the realization of my worthiness and of how important it is to love myself began long before this um, with the birth of my first son. But we always continue to unfold and there's always more for us to learn and there's always another layer to peel back. And sometimes that can be really frustrating because we think, oh my gosh, I've done the work already. Really? Like there's more work to do? And that's exactly how I felt when I was faced with this challenge in my life. So let me give you a little bit of background. What happened leading up to this point was I was doing long distance triathlon for many years and it was something that I loved. I got great enjoyment out of it. I was also a triathlon coach And I loved encouraging people. I loved seeing people push past their limits. And I loved pushing past my own limits. It gave me a great amount of self-satisfaction. It really felt empowering to me to see what my body was capable of. And then it wasn't working anymore. There came a point in my triathlon career, and this was the year after I did my first full Ironman distance triathlon, the following year, I decided it was going to be all about going faster. And I pushed and pushed and pushed that year. I raced three races in order to go faster, all half iron distance. And I didn't go faster. I I was shooting to have my fastest time ever. And the last race that I did, I missed it literally by one minute. And I remember crossing the finish line and looking at my watch and seeing that I missed it by one minute and feeling so disappointed in myself. And I had just raced a six hour race. I had just pushed my body through immense physical challenges 
And the first thing that I thought was, I was just disappointed that it wasn't enough, that I was not fast enough, that I was not good enough, that I wasn't enough. And, you know, I didn't have the realization right then of what came about a month later. As I was reflecting back on the race, all of a sudden, I was like, oh my gosh, it's my same old story of not enough. It's my, that's my story. I thought I had worked through it, but here it is again. And so I thought to myself, well, I think that I need a break from triathlon. So I decided to take a break and I went straight to CrossFit. (laughs) And for those of you who don't know anything about CrossFit, it's high intensity. It's really, really different from triathlon, especially long distance triathlon, because it's a lot less hours a week. I mean, I was probably training between 10 and 12 hours a week when I was doing triathlon. And when I went to CrossFit, I went down to maybe three or four hours a week. And it felt like a big change for me. It felt like a lot less Although the intensity was different, you know, it's lifting heavy weights, it's really pushing at your lactate threshold a lot, like high heart rate. And I really loved it. And I went right into that. And I just, you know, it's like I turned my competitive spirit, my need to prove to myself that I could do more and do better and go faster. I just turned it into a different avenue. I really didn't deal with it. And so here I am in CrossFit, loving it, meeting new people, doing new things, challenging my body in a different way. And about a year into that, I started feeling completely exhausted all the time. And I remember at this time in my life, I was driving my oldest son to a school that was out of our district because we felt that he needed something that his current school wasn't able to provide for him. And so I was driving him to school 30 minutes each way, morning and afternoon. And I remember having some of those afternoon drives where I would literally be five minutes from my house and feel like, I think I need to pull over on the side of the road because I'm afraid I might go to sleep. That's how tired I was. I have never experienced such deep exhaustion in my whole life. And it started to concern me because no amount of sleep felt like was fixing it. And I was continuing to do CrossFit during this time. I was driving all over the place, you know, spending up to two or three hours a day in the car, driving my kids around. And finally, I was like, something has to give. So I went to the doctor. I went to my gynecologist and actually switched. I switched to a different one because I wanted one who's like really holistically minded and open to different therapies and, um, ways to heal people besides just medicine. And so it was a really good decision for me to switch because the woman that I see now is amazing. So I went to her and I told her what was going on and she immediately said, well, I know exactly what your problem is. And I was like, what? I mean, like she didn't do like a blood test or anything. And I was like, how do you know? She's like, I know I see this all the time in women like you and high achieving women who push and push. She said, you have adrenal fatigue. And I was like, what's adrenal fatigue? And it's basically when the um, your body stops producing cortisol, which is the thing that kind of wakes you up in the morning. It gives you energy. And we don't want too much cortisol um, because that's how we get into adrenal fatigue. And essentially what happened was with all of my long distance training and then jumping straight into triathlon and adding on top of that the stress of being a mother and a wife and of having my own business and of being a musician, all of that adds up and all of that produces cortisol. And after a while, the place that makes cortisol in your body, your adrenal gland gets tired and it doesn't work as well. And that's what happened to me. And my adrenal fatigue after going through some testing was so severe that my body was literally not making any cortisol, very, very little. And it is something that we need. We need that to feel like pep in the morning and to make it through our day. And so I started seeing a nutritionist and her and my doctor's immediate advice, like as of, and both of them are like, as of right today, you need to be doing no exercise. And I was like, what? 
because you're talking to a person that has been, you know, training for years consistently, never stopping, always pushing, always pushing. And I was like, I don't understand. What do you mean? Like just cut back. And they were like, no, do nothing. And I was like, okay, but like, could I go for a walk? Nope. Can I do yoga? Nope. Nothing. You need to do nothing right now while your body heals itself. And it was one of those kind of things where I was like, what is happening? And this also happened to be right around the time that I was about to turn 40. And so I started to do some deep soul searching about why I felt like I had to be doing all of the things all of the time. And so it became more than just resting from exercise to heal my body. It became about doing, you know, an account taking of why I was doing the things that I was doing. And what I started to realize was that for my entire life, I had been achieving for achieving's sake. I had been pushing myself to get the gold star at the end. And it wasn't always bad. I think that sometimes we have to go through times in our lives like that to learn these lessons. And there were other lessons that I learned that were valuable to me. And so I wouldn't have changed what I was doing. But I had reached a point in my life where I was literally overachieving just so I could get that external validation. And it basically wore my body out (laughs) because I was pushing, pushing, pushing. And I remember actually having a conversation with my husband one day where I, I said, I'm just afraid people will think that I'm lazy. And he looked at me, he gave me this look, like his eyes were popping out of his head. And he was like, you are not lazy. You are never not doing anything. And I was like, what? You know, we tell ourselves these stories about what it means to stop, about what it means to rest. And my story was, if I stop doing things, I will be lazy. I won't accomplish anything. I won't be good enough. I won't be worthy. And that's when it hit me. All of these things that I was doing was me trying to prove my worth, trying to show myself and others, but mostly myself, that I was enough. And so I decided in that moment of realization that I this needed to be more than just about not exercising. This needed to be a huge revamping of why I do the things that I do. And so I decided in my 40th year that instead of having a bucket list of all the things I was going to do, that I was going to stop doing. And so I declared my 40th year, my year of intentional underachieving. And I literally, like I, I decided that and people, I would tell people like, I'm, I'm underachieving this year. (laughs) And they would look at me like, what? And this is why that is not socially acceptable to declare yourself an underachiever in our society, overachieving, wins. That's what we should be. Especially I think as, as smart, intelligent women, we feel like we have to push and, you know, people would be like, well, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm not going to do anything I don't want to do. And actually there were a lot of things I did want to do like exercising that I had to say no to just for the sake of my health. And I share this with you because for me, it came from this health crisis of having to stop. And I was able to dig a little deeper and make it turn that around into this enormous life lesson for myself that resting is valuable, that resting is something that my body needs. I don't have an option for that. And, you know, If I consider rest to be optional, I will pay a dear price for that in my health and in my emotional health, not just my physical health, right? And so my hope is that you can hear this story and you don't have to be like me. You don't have to get to the point where your body is not working anymore in order to take a step back and really evaluate why you're doing the things that you're doing. 
And what was really interesting to me about that year was this. I didn't become lazy. I didn't become a lump on the couch. I did gain weight. That was a fear of mine. And you know what? I did. And it was okay. Even though I gained weight, I was still enough. I was still worthy. I said no to things. I took days and days and days off. I did only what was necessary. But you know what else I did? I started a business. I, I was a great mom. You know, I was available emotionally for my children and physically, just time-wise. I started to understand that I need to make my rest a priority. And I chose things that mattered to me, not to other people or not to what other people might think about. So this year of underachieving really became a cornerstone of my life going forward because I feel like now I am not an overachiever anymore. <laughs> that does not mean I don't do anything. You, you guys can see that, right? I'm doing a lot of things, but they're all things that I want to be doing. They're all things that matter to me. And I know that if I stopped doing every single one of those things, that I'm still worthy right now. I don't need any of them to be enough. And that's my hope for you. Rest when you need it. Say no to the things that are not important to you and get really clear on what is important to you. This is what is on my heart to share with you. And even if it just speaks to just one person today, then I know I made a difference. And you know what? I know I made a difference regardless because it made a difference in my life. And this is the thing, you guys, when you change your life, when you change your world, you change the world. You know, I believe that. And I believe that about each and every one of you. You are world changers. You are visionaries. You are worthy. 